Welcome to the James and Heather Show. I'm Heather Dawn. And I'm James Gay. And we're dishing out sex, love, and relationship advice. Without all the sexual snobbery. And today we're talking about social media and <laughs> how it affects our relationships, helpful or harmful. Is it wrecking your relationship or is it celebrating your relationship? Exactly. So. We have lots of opinions here. <laughs> we do. And I think James and I are going to be on opposite pages for like the bit. first time in a long time. Yeah. You have a quote to read too, don't you? I do have a quote to read. I yeah. have to say, I actually get excited when James and I take <laughs> differing opinions because right. it's not, it's not uh, often that we do. Yeah. But social media is, you know, how someone wants to see us or how we mm. want the world to see us. Um, and this is especially true when it comes to our relationships. And so mm. we're looking at projection of identity, more of a supplement. And there was this really great um, description of how I feel social media is. Um, so it says, social media has an added layer of nuance as this is a supplement, uh, if not a projection of our identity, connectedness, which is how it pertains to relationships and self-worth. We can piece together an image of ourselves, quantify how loved and seen we are by others, and ultimately begin to gauge and compare where we stand socially. So we can get addicted, as it's saying, which, uh, not your favorite word. <laughs> <laughs> not in the clinical sense, but in the habituation sense. Yes, yes. <laughs> or that's what they meant. They're using yeah. it loosely. Oh, to the thrill and the clicks um, and the pixels, not his cat, because he has a cat named Pixel. <laughs> and, and those things that social media represents. So personhood, uh, connection, inherent worth, are struggles that are very deeply embedded in the human condition. And all of that gets a little bit... Wonky? Mm, yeah, <laughs> wonky, which is one of my favorite words. Uh, when it comes to our intimate relationships amongst many, among many other things right. uh, and social media. So we're going to take a look at if this is helpful or harmful. Well, and again, just to kind of put this in a framework, we are all social creatures. We know this about ourselves, right? We need social support to increase our mental health and stabilize our moods and those kinds of things. Again, trusted, healthy kind of relationships really help our mental health, physical health and well-being. So this sense of belonging, the sense of connection is super important. My perspective around how it relates to social media is that it's it's a tool, right? And like any tool, it can be used to benefit us or it can be used in a way uh, that's more extreme and that actually helps to disconnect us from real life experiences. So for me, it's about moderation. It's about, um, you know, making sure that you're using it versus it using you. Okay problem is that I think a lot of people don't mm -hmm. uh, have the ability to control that we're being programmed all the time and again mm -hmm. we're seeing lots of articles in this not just in uh, our intimate relationships but mm -hmm. even how children are socializing on the playground they're not really doing it anymore mm -hmm. how we're developing he's right we do need social connection but the problem is is that social media especially fake book is not <laughs> authentic I love it. communication <laughs> it's yeah. not authentic communication it's um, a projection how, of how we want to see ourselves and then how others are responding to that and then how they want to see us and so there's this facade and there's this nuance that's going on I can't tell you how many times mm -hmm. um, you know just from articles that I've posted and someone's just like oh my gosh I have to meet you you're this great person and I'm mm -hmm. thinking mm -hmm. what my Facebook person <laughs> or the person I am in my intimate relationships All that right. are both romantic and non because they're mm -hmm. a little bit different my Facebook life is a little more selective sure well in our Facebook post tend to be like the best of our experiences or you know it's or the worst like our, or the worst complain it's, book it's like our sizzle <laughs> reel right yeah it's what we are just it's our branding of who we are and what's going on in our lives and when we're seeing those kinds of things and seeing that reflected in other people's profiles and timelines and posts um we can do a social comparison thing that actually helps to to um, increased depression sometimes because the more we're critical of ourselves right yeah the more that we compare ourselves to our detriment right the, the uh, that just wreaks havoc on our sort of self-worth 
Yes, there are a lot of studies that are showing that people who use social media excessively, and I want to put mm -hmm. that in as a clarification, mm -hmm. um, that you're not as happy mm. uh, with your relationship or yourself, mm -hmm. uh, the more excessive your use is with social media. Mm. Um, and that's just from studies, uh, like out of the world, there's a world of cyber psychology, which I didn't know existed until I started <laughs> researching this episode. And I said to right. James, check this out, right. cyber that's psychology. Kind of cool. yeah, yeah, there's a whole journal I dedicated know. to this field. Yeah. <laughs> the interaction of human behavior and machine and our use yeah. of the machine and it's yeah. pretty neat you know so when we're understanding all of this playing field you know mm -hmm. the question starts coming like should we post mm -hmm. you know should we post more specifically about our intimate uh, relationships and and maybe the question too is how should we post if so right what should that look like so we've all heard sort of uh, and experienced uh, various different posts from relationship status, you know, in terms of like, are you in a relationship or are you newly single? And sometimes these things happen without sort of a conversation beforehand. All of a sudden you show up on Facebook and you're like, wait a second, have I just been broken up with? Yeah. Or <laughs> did they just split up or they just got together? Or there's about like eight or so different sort of relationship status categories, right? I, I have a personal opinion on this, mm -hmm. which is that, and I tell this to anybody I'm in a relationship or dating, mm. um, I'm very public about my relationships and my mm -hmm. personal, real social life. <laughs> yeah. But in terms of social media, uh -huh. um, I actually keep my relationships off of social mm -hmm. media. Mm -hmm. I keep my statuses off of social media. Mm -hmm. I keep anything that deals with my personal relationship yeah. to myself, my personal friends. Mm. Um, you know, if I ever blogged about a, a relationship or a dating experience, I never say names. I don't give of dates. Mm. Um, I'm pretty private about that stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I think that once you start posting on social media, you get caught up into a, again, wonky kind of world. <laughs> um, and studies show that more conflicts arise yeah. um, because you start posting about your intimate relationships um, and that there's a more negative behavior patterns that start to happen when you post about your relationships, including cheating, breaking up, and divorce. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for me, my attitude is, I would just like to avoid the conflict yeah. in general. So, Well, and Facebook's not a great forum for resolve, having or resolving conflict. I yeah. mean, there's t a ton of conflict on it, right? And yet, in our most intimate relationships, if we're posting passive aggressive posts or posts that have subtle meanings for the person that we're with or those kinds of things, you know, if it's on public display. It's gonna it's, be under public scrutiny. And, and it's judgment. kind of unfair, right? It often tends to be um, unilateral, it's not, you know, taking Corraling into sides. account every side of the, the situation. And again, it's just not the best, most direct route to resolve conflict. So that's one thing to try and avoid. Yes. Do not hash out your dirty laundry on Facebook as it relates to your intimate relationships. Now, if you're looking at, you know, should I keep my li my intimate uh, relationship life private mm. versus public? Mm -hmm. Well, there are some pluses and minuses to both those things. Sure, sure. There's conflicting research like there is with a lot of different things, right? Some research says that um, the couples that actually, in moderation, post about their relationship or you know their fondness for each other or the things that they do together, actually those couples are happier in general offline, right? But again, that's to a point because there's also other research that you're yes. referring to. There's other research that uh -huh. that I have found, mm -hmm. um, you know, where. I think f the reason to keep your relationship private um, in terms of developing intimacy, which we sort of had just commented on, which is, mm -hmm. you know, there's an intimacy that needs to develop in a relationship, especially a new relationship or mm -hmm. a troubled relationship. Mm -hmm. Intimacy requires privacy. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't need the scrutiny of the public world or is keeping sides. Mm -hmm. um, studies show that people are happier. Um, when they're posting less about their relationships. Mm -hmm. um, you can have time to grow in private, again, without being in the town square <laughs> right. and having everybody weigh in on the growing pains that happen with growth. <laughs> Hello. Um, well, and it's, it's sometimes putting that out for you know, public viewing so frequently. Again, this is about um, frequency of use. That, that sometimes the relationship becomes just that, right? For public consumption without sort of those intimate sort of personal moments that don't have to be displayed. Yeah. You know, if your relationship is really strong and rooted, newer mm -hmm. relationships 
uh, or relationships that are in trouble uh, mm -hmm. seem to struggle more in the social media posting forum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, but if you have a really solid relationship and both mm -hmm. partners are agreed that you know posting X amount is okay, mm -hmm. you know, obviously it's your choice. Relationships are personal, mm -hmm. um, but there's less conflicts when you um, keep it a little bit more private than public. Yeah. Uh, less jealousies. Um, you know, relationships that are strong and healthy. Um, don't need the validation that sometimes social media can provide. Mm. So that's a positive and a negative because sometimes if you are feeling insecure about your relationship, you can actually feel better by it, um, by posting about it and seeing other people's positive responses to it and that can make you feel a little more secure. Sure, it's, it's in a way, you know, the, the social support in that forum can also, um, you know, again, sort of enhance your relationship in terms of having that kind of social support. But then again, if it's inauthentic, if it's if it's not real, right, you're just posting what you want people to believe about you and your relationship, then when you compare that to what's really going on, there can be a, a, a disconnect and that can actually end up sort of making you feel like, oh, well, is this really worth it? Yeah. You know? And so what happens if you're really social and your partner is more private? Like, then what do you do? Right? Then you go with whoever is most private. <laughs> I mean, in a way, it's, you know, the person that says no oftentimes is the container for a relationship, whether that's around rules, around flirting, or sex with others, or whatever it happens to be, right? The person that tends to be a little bit more conservative, um, it's ge a general rule of thumb, it's best to at least start out there and respect that space, right? So. Um, I've been in situations where I'm in relationship and the other person is um, super private, right? So I would ask whether or not he was okay with me posting certain photos that involve him as well or talking about our relationship in various different ways, right? Um, you can also select different groups Again, within Facebook, um, sometimes other social media where only certain information gets shared with certain people. I mean, it's still public and, you know, there's an argument to be said that whatever's out there can be shared and copied and pasted and all that kind of thing. But there is some level of... Um, selectiveness of, of who you share the things with. And I think setting some rules, mm -hmm. right? So if you're private and mm -hmm. he or she is more social, mm -hmm. you know, have some ground rules and also be a little flexible. Uh, someone who's very social may mm -hmm. not be used to being private. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so there may be some stumbling blocks along the way. And so right. if you're a private person, try not to take that personally the first few times. It yeah. takes time there can be some to develop along yes, the way. <laughs> a new behavior. So you don't have to uh -huh. get into uh, shaming, slamming and having a temper uh -huh. tantrum. Um, you know, and then too, you know, I, I, I remember too, um, I once posted, it wasn't about, I don't post about relationships, but I was writing a, a blog uh -huh. about a relationship I'd had like a decade earlier and mm. somebody I was currently dating who was very private mm -hmm. was just like, oh my gosh, how could you write about me or blah, 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 blah. And I was like, actually, this is not about you. Oh, right. There was so, an assumption <laughs> that it was about them, right? There was an assumption, yeah. which can get really tricky because mm -hmm. I was a little bit more uh, forthcoming about my private life. Mm. Uh, they weren't. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you also have to be careful not to make assumptions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So yeah, that's you can read territory. into things so easily, right? Via text, via email, via social media posts. Um, and if you have a question, ask. Ask, exactly. is this related to the conflict that we just had? Or are you trying to communicate something to me inadvertently, right? Yep. You can, you can, if you don't know, you can ask. So assumptions is mm -hmm. part of what happens is the disadvantages for posting on social media like <laughs> fake book and stuff like that. <laughs> um, you know, it can increase conflicts, insecurities, jealousies, uh -huh. uh, assumptions, uh, challenge intimacies. It can create more depression, uh, competition, stalking, sure. right? So right. especially when you're corralling in a public forum. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know, we haven't yet talked about how social media and our, our, our phone use, right? Whether it's social media, emails, news articles, text, all that kind of stuff. It's when we're with someone that we care about, whether that's a relationship, a friendship, or otherwise, and we're incessantly looking at our phones, that can create a barrier between us and another person or people, right? So yeah. it's important to sort of moderate that use as well. Put those phones down <laughs> at, uh, you know, at the dinner table or, you know, or sometimes there's been moments when I've literally like forgot 
my phone at home and I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do at the at the crosswalk? Oh, I can look up at the sky. I can oh, yeah. breathe. I can like oh my see my environment more. It was really freeing. So it might be good to do that on purpose sometimes. Phone codependency, phone. social media codependency. <laughs> they exist. Uh-huh. Oh, I remember walking once to go on a hike and I was yeah. like uh, almost a mile into it and I was yeah. like, oh, I left my phone. Do you know I actually turned around to go back and get it? <laughs> Did you? <laughs> and were you on it? Well, Oh my hike. God, I or just was like, I've got pictures. a problem. Yeah, I was <laughs> yeah. like, I've got a problem. <laughs> Once a year, I every year for the last, I guess, five years or so now, I go to uh, um, hiking, camping in the wilderness in Yosemite without any Wi-Fi access, no cell phone range coverage, my eyes nothing. Like, ah! <laughs> and I have to say, it is so... Uh, it's just freeing. freeing. Yeah, it sort of like reconnects you with nature. It disconnects you from technology. So having those moments, right? Doing it on purpose, and being intentional about our relationships and our our use of technology. Again, I think depending on how we use technology, it can help and benefit us. And depending on how we use it, it can harm us and our relationships. So. I get the habitual patterns. It's so easy just to keep checking and we want to be in the know. We don't want to feel left out. There can be a lot of things that um, increase the, our frequency of use. And yet if we make the choices, set alarms, do whatever we <laughs> need to do in terms of our own personal boundaries and looking at the discomfort that's coming up from our reach to social media so automatically, um, you know, th- there's some things that we can do about it. Sure, I just don't think it's as easy as it sounds. No. That's my personal opinion. There, there could be discomfort. <laughs> but I would love for it to up. be. I mean, I'm someone who actually practices mindfulness, self awareness, meditation mm-hmm. uh, daily and have been doing for over a decade, mm-hmm. almost close mm-hmm. to two decades. Yeah. And um, I still have trouble oh, yeah, with of it. Course. But of I have a general solid rule, which yeah. is no posting about my relationships uh, ever. Yeah. And I'm not private. So yeah. there is that. I'm sort of in that mid world because uh-huh. I'm not a private person at all. Yeah. And anyone who knows me personally knows. <laughs> that about me hence we're on youtube yes right? <laughs> but i am when it comes to social media posting about yeah. intimate relationships yeah you get to be selective you yeah. get to do what works for you right that being said we have mm-hmm. some tips for you to help you avoid conflict mm-hmm. uh, if social media happens to be wrecking your relationship or celebrating <laughs> your relationship more right. wrecking because you don't need tips for or celebration <laughs> <laughs> number but one the tips. is status updates talk to the person you're with before doing any status updates and be really slow to change that do not change that in moments of conflict (sighs) just like face to face don't threaten the end of relationship when you're in conflict because that ends um up being a, a really unstable thing to do for your relationship which is very close to one of our other tips which is mm-hmm. don't post when you're upset yeah and i'm not talking about generalized i'm so upset this guy cut me off on the road i mean i'm so <laughs> upset this jerk off when i've been dating did such and such uh-huh. don't post when you're upset about your relationships yeah yeah just like you don't want to get into a big hairy fight when you're upset about your relationships <laughs> right. the same rules apply well and this includes no passive aggressive or double meaning sort of posts for the person you're with right? uh, yeah yeah it's important to be direct um, have conflict with someone face to face at least off social media it's just not a great forum to get everybody involved with which right? is a good number three avoid mm-hmm. conflict posts mm-hmm. direct and um, passive aggressive mm. about your intimate relationship again this is not you getting into some political debate on Facebook <laughs> right. or about the taste of a meal we're talking solely mm. about intimate relationships here yeah um, remember you're in a we so mm-hmm. to avoid a uh, conflict find out how your partner feels about social media and their relationship especially right. since you're in one with them right <laughs> And, you know, I mean, there's there's sweet and loving things to do on a daily basis for your relationship, whether that's a sweet text or some flowers or I, I love yous or greetings, you know, those kinds of things. Some people use that um, same kind of thing in social media on Facebook. But again, moderation, right? You don't want to overly do it. So this kind of comes to our fifth point here. Public uh, displays of, of social, social media. Ma- 
affection. Exactly. <laughs> PDA on social media, right? Yeah. It's it can be nauseating for some <laughs> of our fans and friends. And again, it's about you know recognizing our impact, certainly being free to express ourselves, but within certain you know limits. Yes, very <laughs> much so. Um, and again, it's not a judgment call because you do have the capacity of somebody really just loves to do a ton of PDA yeah. and you find yourself in eyeball rolling territory, <laughs> uh, you can unfollow them without unblocking them. Right. I mean, without uh, removing them as your friends. So you mm -hmm. do have that option mm -hmm, too, mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes people just love that PDA on social media. <laughs> and in life. <laughs> and fifth, we would six, mm -hmm. sorry, we would say, don't look for trouble, meaning mm -hmm. you have lots of exes or, <laughs> you know, wish halves or whatever that are uh -huh. on your social media page. Don't go hunting for trouble. Um, you know, a lot of people feel, and again, you want to check in with your partner, uh -huh. that interacting with your ex is a form of emotional cheating, especially if it affects mm -hmm. the current relationship that you're in. Mm. Uh, that's between you and your partner to decide, mm -hmm. but don't go looking for trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, in that, again, it's like even if you are friends with your ex in real life or, you know, on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, it's, it's about how do you interact with them, right? Are you liking their half-naked photos? Are you, you know, uh, posting certain reactions or responses for a particular outcome? And is that in agreement with your relationship agreements, right? Uh, is that okay for your relationship? For some, it's perfectly fine, go for it. For others, it's not, right? So just being clear, being above board, and respecting your relationship. Exactly. So we hope that this helped you um, mm -hmm. to decipher whether you feel social media is helpful or harmful mm -hmm. um, and that you maybe follow some of these tips so that there's less havoc in your relationships. Yes. So you can follow us on the James and Heather show .com. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. James Heather we're on show. social media. <laughs> you can find us everywhere. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and call us with the phone number below. We'd love to hear your feedback, your responses, any questions you have from us. Um, we can even air your voicemail uh, live on these shows. Exactly. So. If you're nice. Yeah. <laughs> so shows every Monday at 3 p.m. Um, and we'll and... be doing Facebook Live now a couple of times a week as well. Sometimes yes. Thursdays, uh, sometimes today. Yeah, Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great day. Right, bye. Everybody.